Thank you very much for joining us. The Columbian is pleased to welcome candidates for state auditor. We have Mark Melosha and Thank you. Pat McCarthy. And I'm Greg Jane, editorial page editor, and you met Lou Brancasio, editor of the paper. And just so you know, we are videotaping this. We will post it unedited on our website for okay. the benefit of our readers, right. as we do with all of our editorial board meetings. Okay. And with that, we will start with introductions. Just take one to two minutes. Uh, introduce yourselves, give us a little bit of background, explain why you are running, and after that we'll move on to some specific policy issues. And we'll start with Mark. Thank you for having me. Mark Melosha. Currently I'm a state senator, chair of the accountability committee in Olympia. But I've been involved in the audit business now for 30 years, back when I was um, uh, Air Force contract manager running the B-1, and I was involved in those procurement scandals of the late 80s that you hear about, the $600 hammer, uh, toilet seat cover. And then I realized what the power of audit to affect change. And that, those series audits actually made uh, Air Force and Boeing together start the lean or quality TQM journey back then. We were realizing we were mismanaging all our contracts. We had to build quality in. So audits change things. And since then, I've jumped into the whole performance and quality uh, business. Uh, eventually, right now, I am uh, uh, just finished doing a uh, uh, Baldridge exam for the National Baldridge Program. Uh, the nation's uh, uh, only uh, performance excellence award given by the Department of Commerce, U.S. Department of Commerce. And I've audited hospitals, colleges, nonprofits, uh, uh, government agencies, on and on in my time. And, um, and I'm running for audit because I want to, to, I'm one of those performance geeks. I've done all those audits pro bono. So spend about 200 hours a year uh, uh, volunteering, help organizations improve. And so my goal is to make sure all government agencies are efficient, effective, and ethical. With the right person, you can, you can have a state auditor, which is goal is not just financial audits, but performance audits. How do we restore trust in government? How do we make it more effective, efficient, and ethical? I have the talent, the experience, and the passion especially to restore trust and make sure we have the best governments that our voters actually want and deserve. Great. Thank you, Pat. I'm Pat McCarthy, and I am the, currently the Pierce County Executive, which is the sef second largest county in the state of Washington. We have 3,000 employees, a $900 million budget, um, uh, and um, I want to take that experience to really bring integrity back and leadership back to the state auditor's office. Our current auditor, state auditor, is under indictment, as you well know, so it's critically important that we elect the next state auditor to be someone who's proven and tested and trusted and I believe I have a strong record. I was the former county auditor in Pierce County uh, having been elected to two of those two terms uh, as county auditor and then prior to that when my children were young I was the, on the school board so I understand how government works I understand how um, budgets are uh, created in local government uh, I have worked, uh, uh, interfaced with the State Auditor's Office for many, many years. Uh, I think we need strong, proven leadership in the State Auditor's Office. We need a good manager. We need somebody who understands this book of business, and I have interfaced with the State Auditor's Office for years and years uh, in many capacities, in leadership capacities. Um, it's, it's, it's time that we really elect someone who really has uh, the skills and ability to really move the state forward in the State Auditor's Office. I think it's really critically important that we understand what the State Auditor's Office does because in this election, when I've been all over the state of Washington, many people don't even know what the State Auditor's, the Auditor's Office does. And the primary job in the State Auditor's Office is to do financial audits. It's the watchdog of the taxpayers' dollars. And it's critically important that we have someone that's going to be that watchdog into the future, uh, ensuring that our tax dollars are well spent, uh, whether it's in local government or state government. And I want to bring that expertise, that in uh, actual practical uh, hands-on experience to do that. Um, I also believe that uh, there are performance audits as a component of what the state auditors does and there are two very different approaches to how you elevate government but how you also hold it accountable. Um, the other auditor's office also does whistleblowers and, and I think it's important that we tighten up the process for how people can access the whistleblower component of the state auditor's office and protect those who really um, have been the whistleblowers from retaliation. So there are a whole host of things I'd like to bring to this position and I believe I'm poised and ready to do that and I would love to have the endorsement of the Vancouver Columbian. And let me ask you a quick question about one word that you used as you were just speaking. 
uh, you, you use the word proven. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in other words, you are a, essentially a proven commodity. Uh, would, would you say that uh, Mark is unproven? I would say that uh, what we need in the state auditor's office is a, a person that knows how to manage uh, a governmental agency. Um, I, I think um, Senator Malo should definitely bring something to the table for this position. Um, but you know, the state auditor's office hires auditors, hires lawyers, hires CPAs to do that body of work. And so I think it's important to uh, be able to have someone that knows how to manage all of those folks to really get the best performance. But, but, but would you go as far as to say he's unproven? Um, in, the, in the sense that he hasn't led a large governmental agency. He has not proven, uh, he has no experience okay. doing that. And how, how do you respond uh, to that part? I manage a 100-person agency in the private sector, Goodwill Industries, three different S, uh, divisions. Uh, I was an executive director, uh, interim executive director for a mental health agency, uh, MBA. I manage a $2.7 billion contract for uh, Air Force looking over Boeing. Uh, uh, I have more than enough experience. But again, fundamentally, we want somebody with vision and audit experience running an audit agency. This was the attorney general can just say, because I just ran, managed a government agency, I'm all of a sudden proven to run the attorney general's office or the Seahawks or a paper. You need actually, there's real management talent. The basic minimum standard of, say, you have to run a government agency, for goodness sakes, Obama just ran his office staff before he was elected president. So that's irrelevant to what the role and the vision is we need for a state auditor. I would just add that Brian Sontag did not, was not an auditor, um, did not have any practical, technical expertise in doing performance audits as, as Senator Melosha has. Um, and our current state auditor, was a CPA and was a lawyer, and that didn't work too well for us. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I, 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 to me, you need good leadership, and you need some of, somebody with practical experience in understanding how government works, how um, records are kept, uh, because if you're going to really get people to perform better, uh, and to really be that watchdog, you really need to understand government in a more hands-on way, and that's what I've been doing, both as county executive and as county auditor. Well, let's. Um Talk about you mentioned the current auditor did not work out too well. It, obviously, that has um, damaged public trust in the office. Mm -hmm. Specifically, how do you go about restoring that? We'll start with Mark. Uh, when you come into a damaged organization, you have to be able to come there with a vision and a plan to improve. Um, I um, have run organizations which were a disaster. Uh, you, I will be talking to all employees within the first 60 days, every single employee within the first 60 days, and the pri uh, principal stakeholders, trying to get them buy into my vision of within five years we have the best run uh, state agencies and local governments. I'll be reaching out to a number of different elected officials and, uh, across the state who also want to be the best, Washington State local governments and, and school districts who want to be the best. Once you have that uh, 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 due diligence done real quickly, it's real easy to achieve that goal. Um, uh, uh, I have a 20-year record of how to improve agencies. If you look at my legislative uh, resume, the bills I introduce, I know how to bring people together for that sort of vision and, ad and adopt that culture change that we're, we in Washington State, our, our governments will be measurably the most efficient, effective, and ethical, and by using the power of the audit to help bring people together to implement those best practices you know, uh, what's working right and what's working wrong, I mean, the auditor doesn't have to come up with that. It's got to make sure those or organizations are listening to their employees and stakeholders and adopting best practices. That's how you improve it. And the auditor t uh, who combined the mantle of financial and performance audits, by the way, the whole industry combined 30 years ago. So uh, right now, all financial audits are also accountability audits or slash performance audits. Uh, that hasn't been completed under... Uh, under, uh, under Troy Kelly. Brian Sontag started that, but that's what needs to happen. Every audit you do is not looking at just financial legal compliance, but performance at the same time. And so that's the skill set and the experience, because I know the power of audit and how to actually use that to improve organizations. Pat, how do you restore faith in the office? 
So I'll give you an, an ex example. Uh, when I was the county auditor, I was the auditor during the uh, Gregoire Rossi election. And as you can remember, how close that election was. And, and I'm sorry, just for a second, let's explain the difference between county auditors and state auditors, because that can be very confusing. You bet. So uh, county auditors are elected in the county, um, in um, the but their duties are different. Their duties are different. Uh, some county auditors do do the auditing in the auditor's office. In Pierce County, the county auditors don't. The county auditor does not do the auditing. Uh, it's done in the budget and finance division, and that changed when we became a charter county many years ago. So in those charter counties, most of the charter counties, not all of them, the county auditor doesn't do the auditing. But many auditors across the state of Washington uh, do do the auditing in the st uh, in in their juris respective jurisdictions. So it's different than the state auditor's and, and office. And the county auditors oversee the local elections. They do. They oversee which is the local. State Correct, which is in the Secretary of State's office. Yeah. So anyway, but let ahead. me give you the Sorry. example of yeah. what about building voters' confidence or building confidence back in a system. So after that election, both sides of the aisle were very frustrated with election officials who are the county auditors, uh, with the exception of King County. So I really led an effort. I really felt strongly in my county, that in Pierce County, that we needed to change uh, people's perception about how elections are run. Neither side of the aisle trusted elections uh, during that election. It was so painfully close. Um, and so what I did is I convened a group of my colleagues from King, Snohomish, um, and Kitsap counties, along with the Secretary of State's office, to come up with a campaign to restore confidence. And we did a series of things. We did a series of outreach activities uh, with the public. Uh, we actually put together what, what I would call a campaign to restore confidence. In Pierce County, we used the um, kind of the tagline, uh, Champions of Democracy, because I think people really didn't understand who actually is running elections. Well, it's mom and pop, it's your grandparents, it's the retired teacher, it's the retired judge, it's, it's a whole host of folks that feel that civic engagement. And I think uh, in order to define that for the public, to, for them to start to build confidence back, they, under, they needed to understand who actually is doing it. What are the mechanics of running elections? Uh, how can you have such a close election? So we did a campaign. We literally met with the editorial boards in each of those uh, respective counties and across the state. And a year later, um, because of that effort and because of my leadership, Sam Reed, Republican uh, Secretary of State, uh, awarded me with the uh, County Auditor of the Year. I'm very proud of that because that's what we need to do in order to really change people's perception. It's You can't do it. Uh, passively. It really has to be a little bit more directive and a really bit more explicit in how you can really bring vote, uh, citizens' confidence back. Again, remember, the primary role of the State Auditor's Office is really to do those financial audits and really to be able to say to people, you know, we're overseeing, we're that outside view, overseeing how those tax dollars are spent. Whether you're a small junior taxing district, a fire district, water district, PUD district, you know, school districts, we have 295 school districts in the state of Washington. Um, we have local districts, counties, 39 counties. Uh, so we have a plethora of local jurisdictions. And then we also have state uh, uh, agencies and departments that need oversight. And they are reviewed and they are audited, financially audited on a schedule. Um, and we need to hear feedback from how people in, in outside of the state auditor's office feel about that process uh, to know what's working and what's not working, to really ascertain um, how we can improve the state auditor's office. If the state auditor's office wants you to be pristine in how you manage not only, not only your financial books, but looking at best practices, looking at how you do strategic planning and do efficiencies within your operations, we need to be able to model that in the state auditor's office. And I think they're doing some good things. They've created a, a tool called a FIT tool that helps smaller jurisdictions understand how to forecast their budgets. I think they've done some really good things. Uh, I think Jan Judy, uh, as the deputy auditor who's endorsed me, has done a phenomenal job. And as I told her when I met her, I can't believe you should be running for state auditor because she's really good. She has a heart, passion, and knowledge and experience. But she wasn't interested. And, and she has endorsed me for this election. I think we really just need a person in this position that really can elevate this office back where it needs to be. Um, I'm assuming both of you 
followed the Troy Kelly trial relatively uh, closely. Um, ended up in a hung jury. Um, mm -hmm. He's going to be retried. Mm -hmm. I have my time to correct. You know, I, I, I'm, I'll ask both of you this question. I know I get that you, you know, didn't sit in on uh, the deliberations. But, uh, Pat, would you have found him guilty? I would have hoped that any kind of indiscretion at this level that, that Troy Kelly should have stepped down as a Democrat. Yeah, yeah, now, I, 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 didn't, I didn't sit in on the trial, so, you know, I work, I live in the county courthouse in my county um, and have talked to a number of, of lawyers, uh, both prosecutors and defense attorneys, and they, they've all come away with different perspectives. Some saying, you know, when there's smoke, there's fire, this, you know, um, and then others that said, I don't think the federal prosecutors made their case. So I don't really know, because I'm not a lawyer, um, whether he's guilty or innocent of those um, um, uh, uh, transgressions that he is alleged to have done. Um, they, had, they found him, I think, um, a hung jury on one, or they quitted him on one, and then the rest, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I believe in the legal system, so my husband's a former Superior Court judge, just retired. Three of my kids are lawyers, so for me, I really believe the system needs okay. to make okay. those determinations. So I get that that's your sort of um, public uh, view of, of, of this thing, but are you going to tell me that when you're sitting around your kitchen table with uh, uh, your husband that you didn't voice an opinion as to whether he was guilty or innocent? I can't judge Mr. Kelly on the legal the legality of what he did. No, I get that, but did you, you had any conversations with your husband over the kitchen table as to what you thought, whether he was guilty or innocent? Regardless of whether he was guilty or innocent, the fact that he had brought this kind of... Um, I get that, but did you have a conversation <laughs> with your husband around the kitchen table voicing your opinion on this case? Was I have yes, had no? a conversation with my husband. And, and what was that opinion? that I, I would believe that, that there, if there's smoke, there's fire, and there's probably something that Mr. Kelly did that was not okay, appropriate. All right, now I could go through that long litany to try to get you to answer the question too, but, or you can go right to the chase and tell me, guilty or innocent? I thought he was guilty. Um, okay. All the stuff I read beforehand in, in the news and his previous hidden a deposition thing that came out and everything else, and uh, I was shocked when it came down that way, to be honest, I didn't follow the, the deals of trial. I still don't know why they look, why they were hung. So I haven't seen that analysis. But. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's talk about the differences between financial audits and performance audits. And uh, Mark, if if you were in this office, how frequently would would you increase the use of performance audits? What should be the role of the office? Uh, Sadar's office has this great. Um, history of uh, the history of audits of the uh, of the state auditors. I suggest you read that. The whole industry of accounting and management the auditors' office has changed over the last hundred years. As I told you, the whole idea of financing and audits have changed greatly since the 70s and 80s, and they're merging into into one field. Um, it all changed, and I take uh, credit for helping pass I-900 when I-900 passed, and for the first time. When you do an audit, you can also look at why the finances are, they may be legally correct, but are, is it, is it, is it, um, are they still um, ineffective, inefficient, or unethical? They are actually, by legislative order, not allowed, Brian Sontag was not allowed to say, uh, point out any performance issues. So, but the field is merging right now. And in fact, the federal standard, the yellow book standards, talks about uh, an accountability audit, which is a financial audit. So the whole field is technically merging. So I intend to move, uh, the, uh, our government tends to be about 20 years behind the private sector, uh, move into that. So all the audits are looking at financial legal compliance. I mean, the money is being spent in the right bu bucket, but make sure it is uh, also efficient, uh, uh, effective, and ethical. Which so you would move all audits by your office in that direction? 
will be a combination because it's more efficient to do the same audit at the same time. That's right. And uh, for example, easiest one, Brian Sontag already started doing this, is doing the transparency audit the same time he's doing the financial audits. So I intend to move in that direction. And, um, and again, I have to make the case to the, within the available funds uh, and, and get additional money if I want. Um, uh, and I have some ideas. For example, uh, uh, we need to do faster, quicker audits. That's what I did in the federal government. Uh, audits need to take uh, less than three months to do. For example, and that's what the federal government, when they audited Western State Hospital, four times in a year and a half. Those are the type of audits you can, you can do. And you can do a lot more audits um, across uh, across board. If you can but do are them. they affected if you do more quickly? Sure they are. Were they effective for Western State? Absolutely. Well, but why did they need four of them? <laughs> Ask Governor Inslee. You know, uh, I think that was the little reason. Uh, 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 it's, uh, the question is, because is, you have an audit, but the question is, will they implement that? And why Governor Inslee didn't implement a quality management program or a safety program or on and on and take four audits for him to start doing that? Uh, uh, so, but that's what I, that's how we operate in the Air Force. Quick and dirty audits, you can get, uh, um, uh, you can do a lot of things uh, very well, very fast. That's the skill set I intend to bring um, uh, to the State Arms Office. Uh, Pat, your thoughts? So there's a great distinction between the two of us on this issue. There are financial audits, and the financial audits are, are to some degrees surprise, to surprise audits. Um, surprise audits, if you will. In some, like in when I was the county auditor, the state auditor's office would surprise you because you have all these uh, cash drawers. And that's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. Did I worry every time they came, would come into the office and say, oh, please make sure everything is copacetic on the financial, that we have the right internal control? So that's what, that's what the financial audits are looking at, your financial controls. Uh, and, and there are times where people have committed fraud or people had, um, have abused uh, the, the tax dollars they've gotten, and that's the beauty about the state auditor's office, being able to be that outside set of eyes to do a financial audit. What I disagree with Mr. Melosha or Senator Melosha is that uh, performance audits are a whole different breed of cat. What that really is, it's about helping local governments understand how they can perform better. And you don't do that with a threat. You do that with an engagement of a conversation. When I first became county executive eight years ago, I actually met with Brian Sontag um, and asked him to come in and do a performance audit, his team, his performance audit team. Uh, Larissa Benson and her team that worked in the state auditor's office at that time came in. They did a fabulous job. They really gave us a roadmap, and they really gave us the confidence the performance audits are okay. There are ways in which you can, what we like to say in Pierce County, straighten the pipes. So when you become very bureaucratic and you have all of these processes and procedures that have grown over time, how do you straighten the pipes? How do you get from beginning to end in a more efficient uh, manner that you can be a, deliver a better service to the customers or the citizens you serve? And we've done that in Pierce County. We use a, a, a performance management tool uh, called Balanced Scorecard. It's served us well. We've also used Lean. Uh, we've also used Six Sigma. So we've used a number of performance measures in which to make sure that what we want to accomplish at the end of the day, we've got all the strategies in place to do that. When I first brought the entire county together to say, I want to do strategic planning, uh, and I'd like us all to get in the same boat and go in the same direction, and um, I had separate elected say, I don't want to be in your boat. You know, because people do resent that. I'm the, I'm the judiciary. We're the judiciary. We're a separate branch of government. I said, okay, can we at least go in the same direction with the same vision? And, and we, everyone jumped on board with doing that. So it's a way to engage local government to, to really understand that you can make improvements. It's not threatening. We'll, we will come in and give you the tools. There are best practices. It's my understanding in the performance audit uh, division uh, with the state auditor's office, They've done, they've um, done, I think, 8,000 individuals that they have trained in performance auditing across the state of Washington, 300 separate jurisdictions. That's a good thing. That means people are really engaging. People are buying into this idea that performance audits can be good. But if you start combining that with a financial audit where it's more of a, an overseeing, a, 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 a watchdog, if you will, process with what you're trying to do is elevate people it just doesn't work people will shut down and I've seen it time and time again so I he and I totally disagree on the approach Mark uh, 
What's uh, Pat's biggest weakness? Uh, she doesn't have any expertise or understanding of the purpose of an audit. Okay. Uh, uh, Pat, what's Mark's biggest weakness? I don't think Senator Melosha has the right um, demeanor um, to really uh, bring the state auditor's office to a, a higher level. I, I, he's been in the legislature for many years. He has not convinced his colleagues to really buy into performance audits. It really was an initiative that really brought performance auditing to the state of Washington. So I, I don't believe he is um, the kind of person that can bring people together to improve the agency and to improve state and local government. So when you use the word demeanor, uh, is he, what, uh, high strung, a little wacky? I mean, what, 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 what do you mean when you say demeanor? Uh, well, for me, I think you need to be someone who can um, be strong, but at the same time be uh, willing to find common ground. And, and in my observation of Senator Melosha, both in the campaign trail, but also in his previous experience as a state senator, it's really been more black and white. And, and, you know, governing is not for the faint of heart. This is hard work to govern. It's hard work to get people to find solutions to problems. And I'm all about finding solutions. And that means sometimes you have to compromise, sometimes you have to cajole, sometimes you have to reach across the aisle to really bring people together. And I think I have the skills to do that. And if you wanted to respond, and I'll Mark, to, to what he said about you as to what your weakness was, can you respond to that? And, and you said my weakness was I don't understand auditing. Well, I think I do understand auditing. I have implemented it in Pierce County. Um, uh, I have, as I said, been a more performance audits with the state auditor's office in the 12 years I served on the Tacoma School Board as a school director to the time that I served as the county auditor to the time I have served as the county executive. In the county executive's office, I oversee the budget and finance office that does the budget and uh, does the auditing for the state auditor's office. Um, I believe I do have the skills and ability. I've had two huge uh, separate elected officials who have been high profile whistleblower cases that I've had to intervene as, as the county executive. One was a Democrat, one was a Republican, one was our uh, assessor treasurer, former assessor treasurer, one is our current prosecutor. A very contentious, you know, very difficult, very expensive um, impacts to the county and uh, to the taxpayers of Pierce County. And it's been incumbent upon me, can't do anything with those old separate electives, but I can make sure the process is fair. I can make sure that there's no retaliation against those who have um, uh, done the whistleblowers in those uh, cases, and that's what I've done in that capacity. And uh, your response to you know, having the demeanor to run the office? I'm passionate about quality and audits. You talk to anybody who's known me for the past two and a half decades, that has always been why I ran for office. Uh, when government fails, people die. We not just waste money. And so this has been um, one of the reasons why I have taken a very unpopular decision to support I-900, which Pat opposed. And you're right. There's a lot of people in Olympia and in various state agencies who want the state auditor's office to disappear, go away, want to repeal I-900 who want it to be this because, but read the introduction to the purpose of I-900. We need an independent auditor who's representing the voters for making sure we have accountable government. That's an issue I'm very uh, passionate about, and you're right, I tend not to back down on that. Compromise to, usually in Olympia, the default position is a bill that does nothing. But I passed the first bill a year before 900, giving the state auditor's office authority to do performance audits. That passed with my colleagues. I passed the bill making sure that we have accountability with the governor's, uh, Governor Gregor's GMAP, her old GMAP program. I wrote that bill mandating um, everybody do Bulger's assessments. Yes, groundbreaking national legislation I passed. And um, I could talk to you about all the other efforts I've done but, in that. But I, I want to try to get more to this demeanor thing. I mean, how would you describe your personality? Oh, just what you see. I'm passionate. Uh, people say I drink too much coffee, but in any case, everybody everybody has an issue. Uh, I talk, tell people I'm typical New Yorker, but in any case, uh, that's who I am. I'm passionate about an issue where almost nobody else is, so they don't like it. But do you think that's so? Do you think that that's off-putting to some people? Of course it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's there's 
uh, issues where people are passionate about that opponents don't like. Right. That's what they say. I mean, that's part of the game. I'm also obviously more of a pit bull when it comes to this, but that's how I am. That's my personality. But that doesn't distract from me being a leader or a manager. That's somebody who's passionate about the issue. And I dare say I, there's very few legislators or elected officials out there who don't get the same way on those issues they're passionate about. This happens to be it for 25 years. Are you a supporter of Don Benton's? Supporter of Don Benton's? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I, I uh, was a Democrat every election for Don no. uh, uh, until uh, recently. I support him as a colleague. Obviously, he is one of the guys, he actually speaks, he's very, speaks the truth to a lot of things. But I never endorse him or anything because yeah, yeah, I never no. had the opportunity and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. yeah, he's a friend of mine. I consider him a friend of mine. Okay, thank you. Should this even be a partisan position? You know, I'm probably an outlier. On, this question's been asked many times of us, and I'm probably an outlier in this because I really believe that I'd rather you know who I am up front. And, you know, if I'm a Democrat, and I'm a proud Democrat, I'm probably more conservative financially, fiscally, if you look at my record. But, but be that as it may, I'm a proud Democrat. If I run, at, but I act in a nonpartisan or bipartisan way. I like to say, in Pierce County, we don't have Democratic rivers and Republican roads. We don't. We serve everyone, and we serve everyone even-handedly. And I did that in the county auditor's office when you are dealing with elections in two-party systems and multi sometimes other parties as well, like the Libertarians, et cetera. So I really think it's better to – otherwise, it's more, to me, it's more transparent. Then you know, as opposed to me running as a nonpartisan individual, and then you have to look at who's endorsing me to know if – what really where maybe my values are or where I, I may stand on certain issues. That's how the public, to me, it's, it's very disclosing and I don't see a problem with it. I, I kind of come from the persuasion it's better to have more transparency on who you are, what you stand for out front as opposed to this kind of nonpartisan where people, and I've experienced it, where people run in nonpartisan positions but act in a very partisan way. And that's just my point of view. Mark, what are your thoughts on that? I intend to, one of my first bills to introduce a bill to make this issue nonpartisan. The auditor's office is about management, management best practices, metrics and data. That's neither Democrat or Republican. Uh, it shouldn't be influenced by conservative or liberal or anything else out. It's about putting out your, uh, and, and I could talk to you about all the auditor standards out there, but it's all about just making sure people uh, uh, improve, you know, following the law. Those are black and white. I mean, there's no uh, if and uh, about that, and so this uh, so it, like the treasurer's office. I talk about other. Uh, there's a couple of other uh, agencies out there who should be nonpartisan. This is one of them, and um, and um, and I intend and I intend to manage that agency that way. I intend to be sending out surveys with met. We'll have metrics that you could see to make sure this issue runs all its audits in a nonpartisan, completely transparent uh, way. Do you think in the past with the office, has, have there been cases of running audits in a partisan fashion? Uh, I thought Brian Sontag had a, a very good reputation of all his audits, which did push the envelope. He, got, um, um, he was uh, told to back down a number of different times. People didn't like his audits. Uh, Troy Kelly actually did nothing with the office, frankly, for four years. Um, I intend to push. I, I'm really serious. My goal is to have every single local government most efficient, effective, and ethical um, um, in our nation. That is the measurable goal, and that can be, and that can be achieved in a nonpartisan way. It's my goal is to make, in fact, the local governments look great because a good audit. You know, I mean, I want people clamoring for the auditor to come in and help them improve, help them improve their audits. Now that you have to finesse, but there's ways of doing that. And, uh, it, it, Can I just respond? Yeah. So I've been endorsed by county auditors on both sides of the Cascades, um, on both sides of the aisle, um, and and I'm I'm proud of that. I locally here I've got former county auditors Don, Ron Dotsauer, Liz Luce, um, who's also was the head of DOL, and, and then actually, and we will get to endorsements. Oh, okay, later. all right. So, um, but but I think um, so. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And now uh, critics have said. 
have claimed did you would audit local government only if they requested it? Is no. Is that accurate? That is not accurate. Okay. That is not accurate. What I said is that for performance audits, it's usually either, it, it's two different ways in which performance audits are done. Um, either you request it, like I did when I was the county executive in Pierce County, uh, to ask the state auditor's office to come in and do it, or there's a risk analysis that the state auditor's office does to determine whether a performance audit really is required or asked for. Uh, for example, if you're, you're in Okanagan County and you're concerned about your commissioners and how they're you know, performing in their practices, you can actually ask the state auditor's office to come in and do a performance audit. Mm -hmm. So a they get on a schedule. A citizen okay. could do that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so it, from my perspective, you know, you're on a schedule with the financial audits, but with the performance audits, uh, if you if a performance audit has been done, let's say it was done in Pierce County, and let's say there were con some concerns that came out of that performance audit on some things that the state auditor's office felt that you could do better, um, they may come back and do another audit, a performance audit. Um, but really, it's more of a collaborative approach uh, in the way the performance audits are done in the state of Washington, um, and, and it's been successful. And I think that's what we need to be about. Not saying, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do a performance audit, and you're going to like it. Because at the end of the day, when, when that person walks out the door, it's up to you to embrace the performance audit. If you don't believe that those tools and those ideas and those concepts and those metrics and that data and that system is something that you're going to put your arms around, you're not going to own it. So you've got to get people to own it, and the only way they own it is they have to believe that what you're bringing to them is a tool that they need and they want and it's going to work for them and they're going to implement it. There are times where you could say, someone could say, I don't think that agency is performing well. The state auditor has a role they can go in and they can do a performance audit on, at that agency. But what people do is they will tend to not want to have it done, but there are limited resources. Senator Melosha did vote for sweeping out $10 million out of the performance audit budget. You know, um, there were those, Jan Judy, one of them, who fought to get that money put back in the budget. I think it's critically important we hold on to the, at least the dollars we have to do performance auditing uh, in the state and, and do as many as we can with those limited resources. Uh, Mark, what about that vote? Is that accurate? No. Uh, Tacoma News Review fact-checked it. Ultimately, at the, as you know, the final budget or, or the budget that you pass is, is a compromise and there's a lot of things in there I don't like, but I was vocal, you'll read the, uh, uh, the fact checked, fighting that. In fact, I was the only one in that town fighting it, the only one. You're right. At the end of the day, uh, I still had to vote for the budget for a lot of other good reasons, but that's how Olympia works. So you don't always get the items you get want in the final budget. But the fact was, I was the only legislator or politician, including the governor, who was actually fighting for that budget. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, I think this office needs somebody who believes in the power of audits to improve agencies. Look at the what I-900 is all about. That was groundbreaking. We need an independent audit who will go in there and help agencies improve. Now, and again, as Pat was talking about performance on it, so you would include those with financial audits so well, local state, uh, 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 local governments and local agencies. Oh, right now there are two state budgets, but I intend to slowly start merging them and start doing system-wide audits. For example, transparency. As part of all, all my fiscal, legal, compliance audits, I, I intend to look at the processes or plans they have in place for how they do open public records and evaluate them specifically on that. So that's going to be done all across the board. So everyone will know which local governments have the best practices, which one doesn't. And my goal as state auditors is to get those to implement those best practices. You've heard $60 million is being spent. You know, all the local governments complain about that. My goal is by, by making performance audits a small part, it's not a lot of time to do that, but to reduce that cost to local governments in half. So I mean, that's a, that, that is a way we can get local governments to save money. Think, Keep true to the law, making sure we have would, transparent would it government. require an increase to nope. your office's budget or staff? Not at all. It could be done within available funds. Something like that I have done is, is not too many hours to do on every additional audit. 
the, the dollars in both those budgets are in separate budget allocations. They can't be combined unless they have some legislative uh, action. And I think the, uh, the most important thing is that Senator Melosha did say he's going to audit, do performance audits across the state of Washington, every local and state government uh, within the existing resources. And that's just not plausible. That's not possible. Um, you know, and the fact that you're going to combine performance audit with financial audits, if you ask any stakeholder um, who is a recipient of those, you are going to hear people say that's just not the way um, we have done it that's been successful in this state. So to take us in that direction, I think, would be a demise, really, of performance audits, which have been very successful, I think, to date. But, Mark, you say budget-wise it is doable without it. Yes. It can be done 10 to 20 hours. Um, we will move on then. Um, each, give us your final pitch why voters should support you. And now's the time to mention any endorsements. If you like, yeah, we'll start with that. Great. Uh, well, I've been endorsed by the editorial boards of the Walla Walla, Tri Cities, Yakima, Spokane, TNT, Tacoma News Tribune, um, Olympian, and the Everett Herald. Um, I'm proud of those endorsements. Um, and um, locally, um, as I said, former um, uh, county auditors, uh, uh, Ron Datsauer and Liz Luce, or your current county uh, treasurer. Um, Doug Lasher has endorsed me and supports me. Uh, Jan Judy and both of our um, primary opponents, our major opponents, uh, Jeff Sprung and um, Mark Wilson have endorsed me. Craig Pridemore has endorsed me. So I've got some great endorsements. Chris Gregoire and Dow Constantine, my colleague from Seattle, or King County, I should say, um, are co-chairs of my campaign. Uh, I've been blessed with business, labor, um, and like I said, county auditors across the Cascades, uh, so people on both sides of the Cascades, uh, people on both sides of the aisle. Um, you know, I, and, and I believe I have a strong record uh, that's been proven and tested. I received uh, an open government award from the, um, that's called the uh, Washington Coalition for Open Government for some work that I did early on in my administration with regards to uh, preserving emails uh, for the digital age. Um, you know, we're in a different world today. We're not in the B-52 world. We are in a world today where people are texting, Snapchatting, um, doing all sorts of ways in which we communicate. I think the auditor's office, state auditor's office, needs to step up our game with how we communicate to the public at large, how we communicate with our stakeholders. Uh, we need to have a higher engagement. Um, and I think that the state auditor's office can do that and reach out. There are 16 separate little agencies across the state of Washington that the state auditor's office has. Um, how effective are they? Um, how can we ensure that we can be efficient in, in an as our organization. One of the complaints I hear from time to time on the campaign trail is the cost of financial audits to, let's say, what, it, what it impact to Waukeyukon County in contrast, or Pacific County in contrast to what it is for Pierce County. Um, and, the, and, and the fact that some larger counties or larger jurisdictions or larger agencies have more resources than the smaller jurisdictions. So how do we approach that? You know, one size maybe doesn't fit all. So I've got some great ideas I want to bring to this position uh, to elevate it, to ensure that we can bring integrity back to the state auditor's office. That's my goal. Uh, that's why I'm running for this position. And I've got a lot of folks who believe that I'm the right person to do that. Great. Thank you. Mark? Well, I've been supported by both uh, business and labor across the board. The state employees, Teamsters, SAU, uh, the dairy pack, electrical contractors, and numerous other businesses who understand that I'm about performance, improving government, uh, bringing expertise to use the power of the audit to improve everyone. Um, Pat always talks about PR stuff. If this is not a PR uh, agency. This is an agency that improves management practices. And when there are problems going on, for example, Western State homeless programs or anywhere else, to come in and help that agency improve. It took four audits for the, uh, before, the, uh, uh, before Western State Hospital started getting serious about improving uh, its agency. People died. You saw all the, the horror headlines. I have that expertise and I've worked on a number of different issues. Just one that Pat just mentioned. I've introduced bills to make sure that the, the state auditor's office audits are cheaper and, um, and, uh, and more efficient each and every time. So local against get more value. 
they will be, the local governments will in fact, will be grading the state auditor's office and you'll have the results to see how well those audits are received. Are the findings justified? Are the, fi the findings provide a good roadmap to improvement? Those are all the skills that you need somebody in who understands quality and audits and performance improvement, especially the passion to do this. I can tell you, and you can talk to Brian Sontag, the pushback you get from everybody about wanting to do an audit, Brian saw that. Pat, go look at her King 5, what she said. She will only audit those who really want her to come in. That's not the purpose of, of, the, of an independently elected state auditor who's in charge of accountability. I think the voters, I think, I think most of all the stakeholders want somebody who gets and is passionate about accountability. And that's who I am. Great. Well, thank you to you both. Thank you. Thank, thank you, both you for coming in. Our pleasure. My pleasure. Very informative. Yeah.